Have you ever wondered, what steps should I be taking in order to become wealthy? In order to become a millionaire? I've wondered it, and I wondered it until I stumbled across some very valid and crucial information. If you're one of those who have been wondering, how do I become a millionaire? Then this video is for you. What's going on guys, Trey here. So if you're new to this channel, welcome. And let me explain to you exactly what this channel is all about. What I like to do is add value to people's lives. And I do so by giving you the best tips as well as strategies that will get you on the path to financial freedom quicker, help you pay off that debt and begin building wealth. So please consider subscribing as it helps the channel to grow smash that like button, and in addition, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any crucial content that will spearhead your journey in building wealth. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now let me start this off with a statistic. 80% of Americans today in 2020 are in debt. Like think about that number, 80%. And the things that have contributed to the 80% of Americans being in negative debt, credit cards, eating out, buying shoes and clothes, being house broke. So what do I mean by all of these things? Number one, credit cards. Now I personally am not against using credit cards because I know how to use them responsibly. If you use credit cards responsibly, you can use it to your benefit. Now, the way that it becomes negative is by irresponsible people using those credit cards and putting themselves further and further into negative debt. For example, if you have four credit cards, they're all maxed out, you're paying your minimum balance with no clear path in sight on paying that debt off, that, my friend, is negative debt and it's something that you need to begin tackling immediately. In this video, I posted steps that you can implement in order to pay that debt off quick and build your way to financial freedom. Once you're finished with this video, why don't you check that one out? The next one was eating out. The reality of this, however, is you're going out and paying for food that is not as good as the food that you can be making at home. Let's think about this. On average, the typical household goes out to eat three to four times a week. And if you do this math, each meal will cost $20 per person. So let's say it's a family of two that goes out to eat three times in a week. That's almost $500 per month that that couple would be spending solely on food. The best way to do this would be when you go grocery shopping, buy enough food that will last you as well as your family for two weeks or to a month. I personally only go grocery shopping once every two weeks and I get exactly what I need and nothing more. It fits in my budget properly and I'm not overspending. People that have issues with finance is because they have a behavioral issue. So I would encourage you to write out a budget and stick to that budget. Overspending on food is one of the main reasons that people are in debt today. The next thing on this list, shoes and clothes. I used to be one of them. I had a closet full of shoes and clothes that half of the time I didn't even wear. What I ended up doing, and in this video, I posted side hustles, and one of those was selling clothes on OfferUp. Majority of these shoes and clothes that I didn't wear, I would sell, and you would be amazed at the amount of people out there that are looking to buy shoes. In one year alone, I would say I made almost $2,000 just selling shoes that I no longer wear. You can sell that stuff and make so much money off of it and add that towards your debt snowball and paying off your debt. The next thing is house broke. What is house broke? It's people who have too much house for their own good. 
An example, why would a two-family household need a five to six bedroom house? You need to stay within your means. It's crucial in building wealth and getting to that millionaire goal that you may have. The first thing that you absolutely should be doing in 2020 to build wealth, pay off all of your debt. The second thing that you absolutely should be doing in 2020 in order to build wealth, start building multiple streams of passive income. What exactly is passive income? Passive income would be earnings derived from, I like to call it side jobs. Not your everyday job, but things that you would do on the side that brings in additional revenue that helps you to invest, that helps you to pay off that debt, that helps you to build wealth. Any type of side hustle, and speaking of side hustles, this video will go over side hustles that you can implement in order to build wealth. The reality of it is the vast majority of millionaires don't just put all their eggs in one basket. They have multiple streams of revenue coming in that builds their financial portfolio so that they can continue to build millions on top of millions. This strategy is not only for millionaires, it's for the everyday Joe. I would like to encourage you to look into multiple streams of revenue. I found through conversations with really good friends of mine that real estate is the way to go, especially for those that are in the military. I'm gonna be doing a separate video for military service members, how you should be using your BAH to get into real estate. So the second thing that you absolutely should be doing in 2020, building multiple streams of revenue, i.e. passive income. The third thing that you absolutely should be doing in 2020 to build wealth, my personal favorite, investing. There are different ways that you can invest. Just to name a few, investing in the stock market, mutual funds, a savings account, investment bonds, investing in the stock market. A lot of good friends of mine invest in the stock market. A lot of them made a huge come up in investing in Tesla. Worked great for them. One friend that I have in particular made $600,000 earlier this year simply in just investing in Tesla. The downside to it is he also lost about $350,000. So it's a game that you play and it involves doing a lot of market research to understand which stocks you should be investing in. Mutual funds. My personal favorite is index funds, which was made popular by the one and only, the great John Bogle. The best index funds to purchase would be those that track the S&P 500. Now, a downside to being able to invest in an index fund, for instance, with a Vanguard, would be that you have to deposit a minimum of $3,000 to be able to start that brokerage account in order to invest in index funds. However, good news is you can begin investing the same way through an ETF, which is an exchange traded fund. Don't worry, in a separate video, I'm going to be breaking down step by step how to invest in index funds and or ETFs for beginners. Me personally, I invest in index funds as well as ETFs. I cannot express or explain to you enough in detail how much it has changed my financial picture. One piece of advice I would give you if you have already or if you're planning on starting to invest in index funds is to be sure that you fully diversify your portfolio. The next one would be savings accounts. This one can be a tricky one. In 2020, you're drawing about 0.03% interest. Now for me, what I utilize is a high yield savings account. A high yield savings account is one that you put your money into and your return would be somewhere around 1% and it's been up to as high as 2.26%. I fully encourage those who are looking to put money into a savings account to do just that. I have the funds from my emergency fund going straight into a high yield savings account. So that way, instead of accumulating a 0.02% on the money that's just sitting there, I'm currently bringing in about 1.14% through a high yield savings account. And lastly, investment bonds. An investment bond is something that you can additionally invest in through ETFs or through a Vanguard brokerage account. And earlier this year in 2020, the great Warren Buffett has specifically stated that he himself, if he should happen to pass away, would want his wife to invest 90% of his assets 
into a treasury bond or some sort of investment bond. And let's be real, if Warren Buffett says it's good, it probably is. The third thing that you absolutely should be doing in 2020 in order to build wealth is investing. All right, guys, so in summary, the three things that you should absolutely be doing in 2020 in order to build wealth. Number one, pay off your debt. Pay them off now, like right now. Number two, build additional streams of revenue, i.e. passive income. And number three, my personal favorite is start investing. If you're not investing already, you are missing out. You must start investing in order to build wealth. How exactly do millionaires continue to make millions? They invest. All right, guys, so if you felt that this video has been insightful or beneficial to you in any way, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel to grow smash the like button, and also hit the notification bell so you don't miss any other videos that I drop because I do them every week. Put in the comments down below, have you started paying off your debt? If not, do you plan to do so? Do you already have multiple streams of revenue? Let us know in the comments what you're doing. And lastly, let me know in the comments what exactly you're doing in 2020 to invest. As always, guys, it's been a pleasure on this video and I'll see you on the next one.